My name is Professor James Wilson and I'm from Aston University in Birmingham in the UK. I'm here in Bogota to talk about dry eye today. I am a member of the Tear Film and Ocular Surface Society and as you may know in 2017 they did their global reports bringing together the evidence on dry eye, what we understand to date and making recommendations for, as a consensus of the people uh, involved in those reports. In terms of dry eye, we now have a new definition, emphasising the importance of both symptoms and also the breakdown and the homeostasis of the tears. We have a better diagnostic algorithm so everyone can follow the same algorithm, including both symptoms with a standardised questionnaire and then one of either tear film instability with the non-invasive breakup time, osmolarity or ocular surface staining. And then finally, we look at management in terms of the options for that. This is an area where we have good evidence that different options work, but not where they fit together in terms of when we should change from one to the next. And that's what future research is looking into. So I'm very much looking forward to sharing uh, our findings with this conference and to discussing it with the members from Colombia and broader in South America who are interested in dry eye. So in terms of treatment, people should be classifying dry eye in terms of whether it's more aqueous deficient, so it has a low tear meniscus height, or whether it's more evaporative, and we can see that from interferometry of the lipid on the ocular surface, myobography, so looking at the myobomium glands, but also by expressing the glands. In terms of treatment then, if it's more evaporative, and most cases are, we should be thinking about things like liposome in drops or sprays. Um, if it's more aqueous, we should be thinking more about viscosity type drops. There are also, of course, many other treatments, warming the glands in terms of things like a hot compress have been shown to be very effective, as has uh, intense pulse light therapy and also more mechanical ways of heating and massaging um, the lids. Then we do have therapeutics that we can use to reduce uh, inflammation in particular to try and help with dry eye because dry eye can cause inflammation but it's important then we understand what is behind someone's dry eye. And of course there are more advanced methods as well for ophthalmologists to think about and these are the things that we will cover in the talks at this conference.